actually be active. It was. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. Yeah, some, some of this stuff. You makes it more interesting. I think you're starting to match. No, no. no. Well, I think the range match. Yeah, we'll just take any stuff over there. All right. Uh, really sorry, guys, for the late start. Uh, yeah, that's it. Obviously, we're watching the uh, the tournament. Hopefully, that was a that was an amazing last uh, last match there. Ended the 83 to to nothing. Um, so anyway, this is a uh, combat in DCO. Um, I'm gonna. Basically, just uh, we're, we're running a little, uh, get, getting a late start here, so uh, might, might go kind of kind of quick there in the beginning. Uh, but we're going to, uh, I'm going to cover basically just where we've, we've been in the last year, um, then talk about a little bit about the uh, our, our philosophy for DCO combat, then uh, talk a little bit about balance, and then uh, what's next. So um, we started off obviously with uh, with lightning strikes. Uh, about a year ago, um, and lightning strikes obviously uh, introduced electric uh, electricity powers, which is a healing set, very popular. Uh, it was the first time we saw the spark weapons, which is when we, we really started amping up um, the proc system with our um, weapons and our weapon drops. And it also introduced the the, the rank apartment trinket, which people call, it, call it the CC trinket, that uh, um, changed you into the uh, you know the, the suit compartment with the uh, activatable abilities and stuff. Um, after that, a little bit after that, we added roll optional alerts. Um, so uh, Steve and I, uh, around that time, I mean, you know, we, we play a lot together, and so we, um, you know, Steve Lars and I, and a bunch of other um, uh, running alerts and whatnot, and we we, we basically were uh, knew that the queue times were were longer than they should be, and um, so Steve uh, looked over the numbers and you know confirmed what we knew. Right, the vast majority of people. Play damage. People were waiting a long time uh, for the cues, so that was that was why we, we added these roll optional alerts. And um, it was it was night and day when, when that system got turned on because queue times were like went from you know sometimes as long as an hour depending on the worst case scenario to uh, to like literally minutes. Um, so the you know that basically the team buff basically added the sort of the cushion that that let um, people run rolls. Or I'm sorry, run alerts without having to have a, the perfect group set up. So that helped quite a bit. Uh, a little bit after that, we added uh, Battle for Earth, which that obviously introduced Earth powers. Um, little aside there, it was the first time we introduced fully articulated pets. So um, up to, up until this point, we uh, our most of our pets were uh, single bone, basically more or less a turret, um, like floating floating cinder blocks. But uh, we amped up our uh, ability to basically some perf improvements based uh, let us actually have fully articulated pets that, that could be you know humanoid frame. So that was the first time we saw that. Um, that's also when we started widening uh, the content, content availability and introduced our first uh, tier three alert and then uh, some more two, tier two uh, duos. Um, now leading up in the run up to the next DLC um, Last laugh uh, before it was even announced, we began uh, looking really hard at our uh, PvP system and trying to to get that in line. So part of that obviously was was Suicide Squad, um, which was that's again Steve 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 Wyckoff. If you didn't know, sort of like he's the master of matchmaking, which you you sort of you've sort of seen here, which is <laughs> his skill in organizing tournaments and stuff like that. But he's uh, he's responsible for a lot of um, or basically pretty much all of our. Uh, behind the scene matchmaking. So uh, Suicide Squad added cross faction PvP, uh, much in the same way we had uh, some really long queue times for our PvE content. PvP content was sort of suffering the same situation because of the uh, hero villain disparity. So adding um, Suicide Squad allowed us basically to again turn long queue times into like literally just minutes, uh, which helps a lot. I mean, really. We just we want people to just be able to play. I mean that's that's what I was, was like. People just want to play. Um, and so uh, Suicide Squad helped a lot with that. We also started trying to address um, address a lot of our long-standing PvP bugs. If you remember <coughs> back in that time, there was uh, there was for example the problem with Breakout where you would, you would, you'd break out and then you'd stand up and your guy'd be like and you'd be like move move. Um, and that's actually another thing Steve <laughs> managed to to find. It was. Uh, 
It was a, a deep, gnarly, almost um, completely different. It took a long time to find it, but uh, we did finally find and fix that and, and many other PVP bugs um, in the run-up to last lap. <coughs> uh, we also went through and did some PVP stat balance adjustments to try to, uh, to, to uh, improve those, and I'll be talking, talking more about that a little later. Um, Lars added uh, some anti-AFK countermeasures. That was a little later. Um, but we also uh, introduced uh, the Tier 3 PvP gear. Um, so, obviously that led up, led up to the last lap. Um, and that basically, uh, that gave us the shield for the first time. I guess, I guess we're a version of... Okay, well, these, are, these were videos, but apparently... Apparently whatever... No, it's, it's not PowerPoint, it is here, yeah. open office, which doesn't open do office, everything really. that's supposed to do. This is the why don't we have PowerPoint on this computer? Okay, well, I guess, yeah, we're, I guess that'll make it a lot faster because we won't have anything to watch. Um, <laughs> uh, so that introduced the shield, uh, introduced safe house battles uh, for the first time. Those are really cool. Um, the uh, Just the whole uh, rugby sort of aspect of, of, um, of running the... Um, running the, the things through watch the, the, the watchtower. Um, uh, yeah, we could. That's going to be... Um, we also added a ton of new uh, Legends characters uh, to, the, uh, to the fray. Uh, actually, lots of them. Uh, it was the first time we introduced the PvP award boxes, um, PvP missions, and uh, finally introduced our Tier 4 PvP gear um, uh, slightly after that, we started uh, looking at our NPC uh, combat mechanics. You know, until this time, uh, our combat mechanics were applied inconsistently. Um, some NPCs used them, other NPCs didn't, and even within that, uh, sometimes they, they weren't set up exactly exactly the same way. Um, so. Uh, we also had match NPCs, those are like the, the slightly tougher um, sort of NPCs, and those were challenging, but they weren't really fun, so a um, yeah. good example of that are like the rhinos, you know, you'd be sitting there fighting a guy or whatever, and just get smacked off uh, from off the screen for like a 30 year call. Um, so uh, basically we, we went through and uh, applied the, the rules for combat system more consistently to the match and boss NPCs to to hopefully make those more fun and uh, make the matches a little less cheesy in that regard. So they were um, uh, still challenging, but uh, uh, in hopefully a more, you know, a, a less spiky, uh, bad way. Um, just recently we took our first pass at teaching combat mechanics in, in the uh, tutorial. And that's, that, like I said, that's literally the first pass where uh, we're actually going to I guess we have an analysis, but we are actually working on hopefully redoing the, the tutorial to teach these things uh, both more thoroughly. And um, we also added baseline block breakers and interrupts to all the weapons. So uh, at the same time we were doing this, we also did some content retiering. Uh, at the time, I'm sure you remember, we had marks of distinction, marks of Krypton. Um, and basically we just had a ton of marks and it was getting, getting confusing. Uh, so basically, we, we combined uh, the first three tiers of marks and essentially just did away with distinctions and kryptons and went on to just using marks of triumph. Um, we also had sort of a content distribution problem in that uh, we had a ton of content for you to, to do at tier one, um, from solo all the way up to, well, we didn't have tier one raids, but basically we had solo group and duo content in tier one, tons of it to do. And tier two we had much less, we had, you know, maybe a, a handful of duos, but it was mostly format, and by, you know, tier three had almost nothing. So um, that's that's not so great if, you know, you you can't always find a group. So basically what we did is, is we re-tiered a lot of content uh, and smoothed the progression all the way to tier four so that uh, you'll be able to I mean, if you wanted to right now, you could solo your way all, all the way to Tier 4. Um, and so basically you can progress the way you like, whether you like solos, duos, four, or eight man. Um, and then on top of that, we also added the weekly uh, award boxes 
which are basically, you know, it's, it's a way to kind of give you a little boost of progression um, and, and help you uh, work your way through the tiers um, regardless of what you'd like to play. Um, and then finally, most recently, we added a Hand of Fate, um, which uh, that uh, introduced the operations, it introduced utility belts. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but um, I believe uh, Jens also mentioned this in, in other panels, but whenever we, we implement a feature, we, we try not to do anything that's like completely monolithic. Um, so uh, utility belts, for example, something Lars worked uh, very hard on, but it's more, it's, there's more than that under the, you know, under the hood, so to speak, in that uh, utility belts and the tech that went into that really, really uh, opened up the sorts of things we're able to do with items right now, and so we'll, you'll be seeing some of the results of that with, with DLC 6. Um, and then obviously we, we also added the Fate and Faust playable legends. Uh, so that was basically the, the, what we've done over the last year. And so now i um, shift gears a little bit and talk about our uh, combat philosophy for DC Universe Online. Um, so obviously number one, it's, it's you know, super powered combat. So a lot of, you know, a lot of big impulses, a lot of, lot of um, knockbacks, knock backs, very powerful looking and powerful feeling um, attacks and combos that you can do with your character. Um, it's always been our philosophy that player skill should be more important than gear. Now obviously gear can give you a pretty, pretty huge advantage, but um, even you know, an extremely skilled player will still, you know, can still have a chance against a player who's, who's incredibly geared. Um, in addition to that, obviously it's very important to be able to read and predict your opponent. Um, so on the NPC side, obviously we use, we use tells and we more or less put a Put a giant icon up up on the uh, the NPC, but really for the most part, combos were the answer to to helping you read uh, read your opponent. In that, um, you know, we're an MMO, so anything, you know, you're, you're basically perpetually playing in the past, right? So um, even with the best thing you can have, it's still going to take about 350 milliseconds for um, the data to make the round trip. So that means the quickest anything can happen is 350 milliseconds, or the fastest you can react. So um, combos actually let us um, sort of uh, sort of mask that, uh, so to speak, in, in that you, you begin a combo, and you'll be able to once the combo begins, you'll uh, you're more or less committed to a path, right? Now at any time you might decide to finish the combo and spike it up, um, but basically as soon as your opponent starts seeing you do that combo they can begin to predict and guess what you might do next. Now, again, that's, that's where the sort of metagame begins in, in trying to fake your opponent out because you could actually stop doing that combo and block or instead do a range attack or whatever. But the important part is um, the real juice of it is within the combos. And so you want to, you know, basically the best thing you can do is finish the combo because that's going to give you the big dam damage spike. But it's also, you know, it's, it's also risky because your opponent knows you're going to try to do that so they have a chance to read it predict you. Um, and then finally, you know, it's always important, it's, as often as possible, to make sure there's a right and wrong decision uh, you can make. So it's basically, you know, the, the layered rock, paper, scissors uh, happening on the weapon level, uh, as well as on uh, the more tactical level when uh, you have uh, roles mixed in uh, to the situation. Now, uh, uh, balance is a very very difficult thing. Um, so the balance of power is always going to uh, shift over time, right? So we're constantly adding new weapons and features and new items to the game, um, and these are going to constantly introduce new variables. So as we need, we're going to make, you know, we continue to make adjustments on stuff to, to keep things on track. So for example, we, we started talking about Tier 5, we're going to introduce Tier 5 in the uh, upcoming uh, months next year, and we'll have to do you know, a few adjustments here and there to, to make sure things are you know, where, where they need to be. Um, but we also uh, very much, as I mentioned earlier, did that with um, uh, with PvP. So uh, I'd like to look at basically that, that specific example because, you know, there, there were some obviously uh, maybe controversial changes that, that happened between um, uh, up tiering from uh, sort of our Tier 2 to Tier 3 and Tier 4 PvP. Now, we, we made these stat and balance changes uh, just prior to DLC 4, and uh, the reason for having it, like, part, part of the issue was PvP gear had actually fallen behind PvE gear, so we'd, uh, we had introduced Fortress, obviously, um, 
So we had all three fortresses out there, um, and uh, we added R and D, and that basically almost almost belt players up a tier. Now, that was that was a known quantity. We knew that would uh, that would happen, but we were a little slow in getting out the PvP gear. So what really happened is um, combat basically became too bursty to become really super tactical. Fights were really, really fast. And it was reaching the point where, where gear was uh, beginning to edge out skill. Um, and really it, it focused a lot, you know, basically people began uh, gearing themselves for, basically crip, crip, crip ruled all, right? So um, basically it was really, you know, that's why I have the, the gooder geared up there. Um, so this was basically uh, a video, in, you know, showing what was sort of a decent, a decent sort of uh, toss up between uh, two players, and it was it, it lasted maybe maybe ten seconds, um, which for in in this uh, sort of era was actually sort of a long fight. Um, this there's a computer there, um, so I actually pull 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 up these because these are kind of funny. Um, these. So uh, these are a series of two-second battles, and as you can see, actually, if only we could have PowerPoint. Um, so if you see, you can see the the. All right, there we go. All right, you see the guy's health. He's got plenty of health. Nowadays, you you can see that amount of health and say, I'm going to have to be on this guy for at least at least a good 10 or 15 seconds to to get him down, right? So we're, we're, we're starting from there, right? Uh, let's see, this would, be, this would be this one, the quickies, right? So, and we don't have media player installed on this computer. <laughs> awesome! It's, 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 it's there. It's there. there. That's awesome. it's there. <laughs> Excellent. All right, can we do it? Can we have oh, it? Oh, 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 you missed it. Do you know why you oh. missed it? Because it's gone. All right, so stun this guy, it's plenty of health, and it's gone. And let's see what else we got. We got oh she's up there. She's flying. I see her. And yep, she's she's also gone. Uh, and oh here's a, here's a good three I won. And basically you know where I very skillfully crit three times. That's why I won. Basically it was three three good crits. I'm gonna crit you. And I'm gonna crit this guy over here. Obviously I'm using my Coast City trinket. So as you can see, like I said, these were that was that was too fast to even really see what was happening. So we clearly had uh, we had had a few issues. Uh, so we needed to sort of return to sanity, right? So uh, we did a few things to, to help out with that. One, obviously, was uh, we, uh, we added crit suppression, which uh, sort of reduced the burst, basically just reduced, reduced your chance to crit a little bit and re reduced the crit damage a little bit um, when you're within an arena. Um, we also reduced toughness and increased health. So what that did, basically, is it increased everybody's effective health so that fights would last longer. But it also um, it also reduced the effectiveness of, of healing because of it's a mathy kind of thing. But basically, uh, toughness and healing interact in a way that makes both of them makes healing better. So by reducing toughness, we actually made healing a little a little tougher, which was again a, that was another sort of issue with the way PvP was at that time. Is is that you had the full bar and the empty bar, and then the full bar and then the empty bar, and that's basically how it was. It was like as quickly as you can healing, and as quickly as you can DPSing the person down. Uh, and this wasn't wasn't super super great or very tactical. Um, so now we have a situation like I said. You, you saw the tournament. Even even in vastly different skill levels, the fights are long enough to provide you a you know a legitimate, hopefully give you a, a chance that you legitimately legitimately lost or won. Um, that's very hard words to say there. Um, and then later we added. I'm sorry. What? That's a very dubious. Water. That's bound water. Um, so this was sort of an example of uh, counter immunity in action. But basically, in uh, uh, multiplayer rock paper scissors, obviously people very quickly found out the best thing to do in mul you know, multiplayer rock paper scissors is to pick a target and everybody play one of each on. And that's still a very good tactic to use. Um, but uh, that essentially left, leaves the victim of that tactic with really no viable option to escape. Um, so counter immunity basically flipped that problem on its head, and it allows skill, you know, skill players a very short but important, you know, minute to test their breath. So a three on one is still a pretty, 
pretty grim situation, but uh, depending on the skill, you know, the skill differential, um, you you may actually live for a little, you know, long enough to. actually the other night. So um, basically this was a pre-made versus a pug and I was actually trying to get shield footage. This is I'm using it as a shield right now. But basically most of the other team is, is dead. The, the healer's going down and I'm out of power uh, and there's three dudes beating on me. And so basically that's a pretty bad situation but um, as much as I can I'm trying to just counter that guy. Uh, there's block that dude, counter him. So I'm basically using immunity to just just stay alive. And as you can see, my, you know, I'm just barely hanging on at this point. You're um, beast. The, uh, okay. the, cool the cool on my cola is just about up. I'm just about up. Oh, supercharged cola, thank God. Okay, and then the healers come back. and So that's that's the sort of, like I said, this was three tanks and they weren't, they weren't super great. But you know, that's sort of an example of um, uh, what would have been a completely, you know, Really unfair kind of uh, situation. Would be yeah. great if somebody was eyes. You're just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, it could be. Like I said, that was. I think that was. Why are you dogging me? <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog in here. Um, so, anyway, what's next? We've actually really. If you've been to the other panels, we've we've talked about a lot of the stuff already. So obviously, we've, we've announced uh, home turf uh, layers and layer battles. Those are those are going to be pretty awesome. Um, and uh, we're going to have, uh, right, so we talked about the orbital strikes and the supply drops, you know, like your brother eye in the sky, the allies and followers, you know, your posses and pinch hitters, the new slot specific mods that'll have, you know, the crazy new effects. Um, but one other thing I, we haven't, you haven't seen yet, um, that's pretty cool, and you'll see this maybe the next update, it's actually sort of, sort of on the line, so I'm not sure if it's going to make the next update or the update af after this, but it is a um, our FX pollution solution, right? So um, the title "Whose Hand Is That?" with the associated video I shall show you. Basically, we 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 know what this is, right? I mean, this is uh, we've all we've all seen this somewhere in here. Lightning. Oh, light! Yeah, light is very good. Um, so obviously, this is this is the moon, right? And so we're going to reach a point here where I slow it down and what's happening? You can see, you can see more, oh yeah, oh yeah, where am I? Who's, who's doing what? What's going on? You know, you notice the fly text is flying down over my character. There's crits popping. It's like, oh, this dude's spinning. Oh, oh, maybe a block. Um, that's, that's kind of the situation we have right now and it's, obviously it's not ideal, right? You cannot read your opponent and you can't see your opponent. Um, so we actually started working on this a long time ago, to believe it or not, um, and we've, we've introduced a few of the, uh, like the first step of that obviously was to get the fly touch, you'll notice now, actually goes over your character's head, no longer streams down over you, uh, so that's a pretty, pretty significant improvement. Um, but on top of that, we're also adding silhouettes. So this will be an option, uh, this will, both of these uh, will be options you'll be able to choose so you can use one or the other or both, but we're adding a, a slider option that will reduce the effects intensity. So um, if you just don't care to see uh, that many effects, you can actually just tone them down and it'll, it'll fade them out pretty significantly. Um, so that, that's, pretty, that's pretty huge. And as well, we've also uh, added outline text. So this, this character right now um, is, you can see, basically has sort of a green outline uh, over him. Uh, and like I said, that's that's uh, one of, probably one of the heaviest electric effects in existence right there. Um, but nevertheless, you'll be able to see through that if you're if you have outlines turned on. We'll have your and that's not necessarily going to be the follow, final colors. We're still uh, we're still going to get a final column. What whether uh, you're going to be green or blue, and obviously enemies will probably be red. But you'll be able to distinguish yourself, allies, and enemies through you know if you choose to play with your FX uh, fully on and you'll be able to read them and, and uh, uh, tell what's going on with them. Um, so, now I'd like to open up for questions. I've uh, done, my, done my spiel and my, my rambling. Um, yes, Jens? I'd like to ask a question. Was that guy on the other side of that large effect, or was he on the side closest to us? Uh, actually, you know what? I, I had to do that up against the wall to get that screenshot, so it was probably on, on this side of the effect. Okay. Um, but nevertheless, 
he was still occluded, right? So it's it's sort of a, a trick of the trick of the eye. Um, actually, it's not a trick of the eye. I actually was in front of the. Uh, yeah, I really was in front of the effect. There's a wall in front of there that you can't see that's covered by the giant looming electrical effects. Um, but if I had walked on the other side of that, you would still be able to see. Um, so anyway, questions of any sort, matter or kind. Yes, sir. I have a totally new question. I, I started playing in beta, but then I kind of stopped and played. Um, I played more, uh, another Sony game because it had the all, all access. Um, mm -hmm. I recently started coming back, and then I saw all these soccer images. And there was a quest to go to this one NPC, and they didn't say, hey, you can make all this cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, how? And then the quest is gone, and I have no idea what I have to do. What do I have to make? How I have to really no information in the game telling me what I got to do to make all this stuff. Other than here's the here's the table, click on it, and but I, it doesn't tell me what I got to do, what I got to get. It's not. It doesn't explain it well. Someone yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that's something we can work on. Uh, you should have did you get you should have gotten the recipes in your. Well, I, I, I got one recipe, recipe but then I'm like, how do I get the components for it? It doesn't really explain it. Right, there's actually so vendors right next to the guy. No, right, but what he's saying is that if there's, if there's a new person that's just playing the game who doesn't have people to ask about, there's no quest, there's no starter quest or tutorial quest to show him how to go about getting this stuff yeah, recommended like for him. Or in-game guy. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've yeah. looked it up. Yeah, I've you know, went to websites and I searched all over the place to find what I have to do, and now I know what I have to do with some new Right, that's, that's, in, we agree that it's, that, that's not ideal. I have to to find this info. <clears throat> yeah, like, like for instance, when, when you learn about investigations and briefings, you go to Hunter, she tells you what to do, you go out and find your green button, you come back, or find the Riddler, and you go, you'll find, you'll talk to the Riddler and same thing. That doesn't happen. So, like, you talk to the Phantom Strength, you talk to Will Magnus or the other guy, and you go, "Hey," they say, "Go over here and find this," and then come back. So you know what an exhibit call looks like in the world, and you know what you're supposed to do, and you go back and tell them. That would be a great quest to add because exactly. then the guys who get to level ten and don't know what they're doing at all will know then what to do next. And then, and then even walk me through, okay. Well, Put these two things together. Click on this. Now you have it. Put it in this one. Put it in this one piece of arm, and now you're even better. So I go, oh, okay. Now I know what to do, and then I can go on from there. Especially early on, you know, at sure. level one, two, three. There's no info about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mark did mention that we're going. We added kind of an updated tutorial to uh, the start of the game. So it teaches some of the additional combat mechanics. Um, um, it is the it is our intention to also introduce tutorials at what level ten of some sort to kind of teach roles. Right. So there, yeah, there are gaps in our in-game education. But well, uh, and, and it's not for someone. I already had two or three level thirty characters, hadn't played for about six eight months, and a lot of stuff has changed since then. But if I was level one coming in, it would guide me through that from level one. I'm already level thirty. Right. The game presumes I know what. Right, I'm that doesn't make it difficult. I mean, if you're leveling now, you're gonna you're gonna see exo bits, and you're gonna be like, oh, you're probably going to have a few by the time if you you know by the time you actually get to the quest. Uh, I think that my favorite observation was, I remember coming up and playing, getting a level thirty, and all these things pop up on your screen, right? Yeah. That's and that's and, you, and it didn't tell you what was what. It didn't tell you what was an alert, what was a duo, what was this, what was that. And so, you know, you're like, hey, go here. You know, go, go to this undisclosed location. Okay, I go here. And you get the, you're in the bad cave. And I think everybody who's an old school player knows exactly what came next. Hi, I got the level 30. I go in the bad cave. Wow, I'm going to go do something in the bad cave. And you get killed. And yeah. it takes you maybe one or two rotations through that to realize, oh, this is supposed to be a raid. I can't do this by myself or with a handful of people. I have to have a whole group of folks. It doesn't tell you that. It just tells you, go here. <laughs> you know, and it's like, that, it, it was fine, but at the same time, whenever somebody would get level 30, I get level 30, I'm going to go do this. I'm like, I wouldn't do that for you. Because we knew what was happening. It was, it's kind of an in, in, in tie, inside joke for us really old veterans, but <laughs> having something there to kind of tell the new players once you get to level 30, this is what a raid is. Right, right. This is what an alert is. You can even add it into the text. They tell you to go find this mark and go to this place. 
Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Gather your friends. Hopefully some of this gets, play. I mean, we did recently with the matchmaking uh, UI changes, it should be a little more indicative, so you don't need to know alert, raid, duo, as knowing the lingo as, as much as mm -hmm. one player, two player, four player. Right. So the more we can do that, and the more we can improve the messaging, and, and the more we can build it into the game so that when you what you're looking at is indicative of what it is and behaves the way that you expect, uh, the better off we'll be. We have another question. Um, uh, well one thing I do like is the, the new UI with the, uh, the, in the past you had to go through to each console to get the solo quest. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't even know that there was a tier two solo quest and tier three until the UI changed. I'm like, holy, instead of getting one, I'm like, holy Christ, I could have done, I'm getting 25 and 50 now. Yeah, yeah actually, there was, was we, we added that. Uh, but added but, it, but it, right. it, it makes it, it easy to make it one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, since I've gone through uh, Central City, I've gotten all the gear. There, I don't know, like I don't even know what tier that is. I don't know where do I go from now. What's tier sure. three here? What's tier four here? I don't know which NPC gives what I should be going next. Because I, I only play an hour or two at a time. I'm not in the guild. I just I go on my own, so I don't know where to go from here. Right. Well, we should put that on the map. Well, one one thing that um, we are doing our best to get in the game is. Um, the ability to render HTML within the game. It's, it's particularly challenging on the PS3 where we've got lots of memory constraints. Um, but that is something that we also intend to do within the next year is actually have embedded help that's in rich format. Um, so we can take advantage of you know, guides that are out there, information that's available and consolidated in the game. So you don't have to go do Google searches and, and search for information that you'd rather find inside the game, and um, ultimately that's what I, what I hope to see in the next, uh, in the next year. With uh, relation to, to that, um, like I said, there are a lot of long-time players in the game who've actually really been helpful, who spend a lot of time in the game helping a lot of new players grind up sometimes, or passing on important information that isn't already listed. Is there any um, discussion at all amongst you all about potentially establishing a guide program? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it wouldn't really be a guide program per se, it would be like a sub mentor program. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I think, um, I mean, it's uh, part of the league, the league overall, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, he's, he's, I believe he's, he's speaking more like so, yeah. uh, because we're a licensed game, um, I don't know if we'd, we'd be able to do, um, you know, anything where uh, you're, you're, you basically take on a, you know, you pretend to be Batman or, or anything like that, um, and uh, have, have those, those sorts of things. Um, but, uh, you know, like a helper program, that might be something, uh, something we could do. Um. One of the ways that we've tried to approach it in some other games that we could try with PC is um, allow folks to kind of uh, identify themselves that will help you, um, as opposed to saying we are going to designate these people as guides, because there are there's been issues in the past, and name companies especially are a little weary of volunteers um, working in the game, um, because we, that's, that's why we, we, we haven't had the guide programs uh, recently. Uh, but I've, I've always wanted to have uh, the ability for players to kind of identify themselves like, hey, I'm willing to help uh, and, uh, and give, give the players the tools to organize their, their, themselves around a you know, you know, uh, system that you can open up and say, who's, who's online that can help me with this? And if someone's identified themselves as someone that can help me with that. Um, so we certainly have a community for it, though, because you, know, you can run around Metropolis or Gotham, and inevitably during the evenings there are people shouting out, Who's looking for help? You know, because they want to run around and they want to help. They want to. They are having fun. Oh, yeah. You know, so they're they're certainly there. So taking advantage of that, you know, yeah, and their their willingness is a great idea. Right. Star Wars Galaxy had it. You had a helper tag right, right. that showed up at the search thing, and you, somebody was willing to help. Mm -hmm. So we could, if we could help call those people out, uh, so they're easier to find or, or whatever. That, that, that would be a good idea. You know, I'm thinking, just 
kind of thinking outside the box is you guys brought that up. You know you have when you, somebody flags themselves for duels, mm -hmm. having a helper tag that you could turn on and off like that. So you could sure. turn it on and off within your own control panel mm -hmm. and say, okay, today I'm going to work on work for a couple hours as a helper, and I flag it. So all of a sudden they have another indicator that sits over your head, and they can kind of request help. And that would be kind of a cool thing to do. Okay. I saved up enough of the Central City trinket, which was a really awesome trinket. Then I put the utility belt in, and then I put the, that trinket into the utility belt, and I don't seem to get the stats for that. So, and granted, I can get other stuff in there, but uh, it seems to almost hurt me more to, to not put the, the Central City trinket in there than as opposed to put the utility belt in. Because I'm not, I'm not getting the stat bonuses for the trinket itself. Right, so we, we basically, uh, you, you'll get the stats from the utility belt itself. So um, from, from that perspective, you know, since uh, Central, Central City is, is uh, about tier two and a half or so, you would probably want to get a tier three or higher uh, utility belt for, for the stats. Where do I get that? Uh, from tier three and higher content. So you get the tier three alerts, tier three duels, tier three challenges, or uh, doing the tier three raids. Any of those, uh, any of those places will be the watchtower there's What's the best one you can buy? I think there's a pretty good, there might be yeah, close tier, tier one and tier two in there. Um, but that was always so the choice. I mean, you right. made it very clear that you were going to make the choice of having extra things that you could use as abilities or the stat. Right. Until you and got one of the better ones that gave you stats plus the space. Right. right. And, and the, the reason sort of we, we made the decision to not allow you to get the stats is inevitably people would only look at the stats of the trinkets or equipping. And so it would be like, well, I just want stats, so I don't care actually about the utility belt or even what any of this stuff does. I'm just going to get four things that have the best stats and stack stack stats. So we didn't want it to be like a, a stat stacking thing, which is why uh, you only get the stats from the utility belt itself, and then you get the utility from whatever the items you put in uh, within that. I want more people throwing dice in the watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sell my balls, Superman ball, my Superman Batman balls, ball. In, in my league, we actually use the eight-sided die to determine loot for anything. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> One of these days, we'll make a report in the chat log. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually that, that was a suggestion that my league asked me to bring up, is can we either get it? <sighs> and we actually we talked about, about it. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were like, what if, what if we could have a report? With, with oh, that would be so great. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, oh, your stuff. <laughs> so, and, and, but, yep. The other two, actually, you just remind me of two, two other things that are sort of, particularly now that we have suicide squads and whatnot, the inability to send tells to uh, cross-faction. Uh, During the match or? At, 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 any, at any time. Even if you, you, you just cannot send the tell to that player. You get the message, you cannot send tell to that player. You, you finish a match, you want to say, hey, Christiana, good match, but he's, he's a hero and I'm a villain, and you can't send a tell. Should be able yeah. to try to do that. I've done it in the versus. Uh, yeah. versus chat. Versus chat. Versus, versus chat. Is, but but versus right. chat's not joined by default, and 99% of the people in the game are not, not. in versus chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It's not a default. I've had it on for so long. Yes. The, and, and the default the is instance, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Request from, from a role player, and I completely agree with it. Yeah, so it needs to be a slash EM emote command where you can make custom emotes, like waves at so and so, so that. Just do slash wave. You do a wave, and nobody knows who you're waving at. Or or uh, slash uh, emote. Just any other emote. Just an emote channel, which would be visible to both heroes and villains. Mm -hmm. So you can role play shakes his fist at Christiana, and, or something like that, and have them see it, and be able to do custom emotes. And it would just be a really simple slash em or slash me, depending on your. Do you say IRC. custom? Do you mean? Custom or targeted? So Cu in, in custom and then you just type, type whatever you want to emote. Oh, right. yeah. Basically overriding the string that comes out with your own. Yeah, I mean, well, so, so, so it shows up in emote, emote color. Okay. People yeah. know it's an emote, but it, it's uh, your so name. and so character yeah. does yeah. whatever. Yeah. So in so. galaxies before Jedi, where I have people you see all the time and trick people, they say, use this force to pull out an umbrella. Be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think that problem quite exists because the colors of modes and stuff and the lack of that or, being used. Or EQ2, they come out, I, I have, yeah, so it's a pick, picture pocket for me yeah. and gold. <laughs> <laughs>
But it definitely adds a lot of fun to the yeah. role play. And, and Any other questions? Anyone? Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I don't know if we've asked, uh, what do you guys think of you know, cross-faction QA? I mean, I know we got for PvE. For PvE, well, for PvP, if you guys have an opinion, and then what would you think of it for PvE? By well, cross faction, do you mean hero versus hero? Squad. Yes. So, so oh, using the suicide squad mechanism to kind of equalize cues because I, am my villain. Uh, so yes, I, I play a villain. Hero versus hero, I, villain versus villain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that way. It's a build, it's build the ranks. Like if you're queuing for the the watchtower of the hero, you could get a villain in there or whatever because you need the space, which isn't likely because there's less villain. Oh, okay. Yeah, so well, it, it'll well, take. Let's, okay, gotcha. My perspective has a villain. I have a bag full of go to area 51, kill so and so, give you mark of triumph at the end, uh, mark of war at the end. All these, these new ones that are, that are for the bonus marks at the end of the operations that I can't get done because I'll be gone for four hours and Bloodhaven will never spawn up or pick a, pick a random thing. Yep. We'll never uh, pop in four hours because yeah. the population is that bad yeah. and villain in the US. I think it doesn't hurt to have it. It never hurts to have it, <laughs> yeah. especially for the following disparity between villain and, and hero, but also people work at the different hours and right. you know, things of that nature that it would really do. As a, as a villain, playing, playing a villain character, I'd run through the same thing he's run through. But the thing I think that would be kind of weird is that, like, um, the armory, you know, if you need to run the armory, that mechanism wouldn't work because heroes can't run the army, so they can't queue for it. Yeah. So you'd still have instances that you couldn't run, you know, well, we and that's that's that. the punishment unless yeah, the Suicide Squad the works ones. both ways. But then that mission, the missions that that like you know Mercy General Hospital, the Armory, and a few others would actually have to be cross faction, which would be kind of a weird thing. It'd be fun, but it'd be weird. Yeah, that's actually part of the reason we were. We haven't seen it sooner, aside from the the, the um, sort of the, the role playing reasons where some people some some uh, some people are obviously going to hate the idea. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it's questions like that. What do you do for for armory and watchtower and uh, like specific duos like you know, uh, broad or there's a massive amount of content work to do for some of those two you see, yeah. faction side. I do think that it would be kind of interesting to see Actually, no, that happen because remember that. I think that the, the counter argument to that, because I've actually had this kind of counter argument online a couple of times, is that people forget that both both factions are fighting in their own way to save the planet. Brainiac is the main threat here, so using that as the counter argument, yeah, there's going to be times where the enemy of your enemy is going to be your friend. Whether that be Brainiac if you're a villain or a hero, or it be the other faction. Because you're fighting to actually preserve what you have. Then that's the other thing that people don't always get. And that's yeah. why when I bring that argument up, they go, oh, I didn't think of it that way. I'm like, well, that's how I see it. This is an invasion by a third party. It's a fight between A and B, and he's seeing his way into our business, so he needs to go. And that's how you can kind of explain some of that. If you want to throw it in that Yeah, I, I mean, um, uh, it's, there's... We, we can certainly come up with some, you know, some some great fiction sauce to make it work uh, from that perspective. But uh, it's so the, the bigger bigger challenges are are the technical, you know, sort of the technical hurdles um, that, that would need to be overcome. I mean, we, uh, at the very least, we could probably do something where, you know, we would not have those initially, but allow the, the shared ones, um, you know, more quickly. Or uh, we'll, we'll just have to. Could you even? Yeah, you know, for those people who are going to be just so RP centric that they just don't want to do it. Yeah, we can let you turn it off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We, we, we I mean, that, like we do with yeah, Suicide Squad. Well, it's silly, but if they really want to do it, it's okay. It's not your world, and you can talk about it. <laughs> right. Might be something heroes turn on or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, on the subject of powers, uh, I, I wasn't on the beta, but I've heard several people who were in on the beta um, back before it was launched that there were some power sets that were unique to just the beta. Will we see those power sets released in, in future DLCs? So if we're talking about just the beta... Um, that would the be, beta. Uh, from what I understand, like uh, nu uh, nuclear, 
or shadow. Sure. So I mean, that's that's actually pre-alpha. Mm -hmm. So um, we think how many how many combat uh, like yeah, we probably eight, eight or a dozen different iterations of our combat system in, in uh, pre-alpha. So um, the the very 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 early footage uh, you saw had did have Earth and we had atomic and we actually had light, um, but it was it was not even not even within the ballpark of, of where it was basically. Um, so there is, yeah, there, there would really be nothing, nothing we could even release that would be, um, at that time I believe we had four tray powers, it was just four powers. So, you know, basically it was, it was literally pre-alpha, it was uh, at that stage of the, the development cycle, you're just trying to nail down what's the game going to be, what's it going to play like, you know, it's mostly, you know, proof of concept and getting the, the vertical slice of, of what you're trying to release. And uh, truth be told, it's not even it was not not even really the same game uh, pre-alpha as what we released with. So by the time we got to beta, everything you know things were pretty much fully fleshed out. We had a full vertical slice. We had a, a, full, a full game to play basically. And those old pow powers were basically just left in the dust. There really wasn't and there really wasn't much to them either, right? A single power has you know there's 24 powers within a single power set, um, and we're talking like you had four Earth powers. Or, or atomic powers, so. I think the implied question is, will there be more powers? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think most of you in here probably know that we're going through the process of refactoring our powers. So we, we've completed mental and gadgets. Um, ice and fire are next, or fire and ice. Um, and right now. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're working on. So. Uh, I think we would have to complete that process before we even consider more. And keep in mind, you know, I've mentioned it to a few of you individually, uh, we have to make sure that the game essentially plays the same on both platforms, so PSC, PS3 and PS PC. And um, so we, we would essentially have to earn back some space, which is possible, but we'd need to find room, you know, just in, in terms of system RAM, to accommodate more powers. That can happen, but uh, a lot of other work has to go in to make it happen. It's not like we're a PC game where we can just say, all right, we'll, we'll just add them. If you look, you know, we have, we have done that and found, found the, the way to do it because where we were at and then we got, we were able to do more powers and we were able to get the articulated pets on there. So it is an ongoing process yeah. of making it better, you know, and that affects both platforms as well. It makes it better on the PS3, it makes it better on your PCs. Do that across the board, but you know that's part of the ongoing live process of this game. Yeah, how do we do it to make it for you all? Sure, and uh, so it is certainly our intention to introduce more powers, um, but you know right now I can't say, oh yeah, I know we'll do it, we'll do it then, uh, just because we, like I said, we have to clear space to do it. Really. But on that note, I think there are some things that we can do to improve uh, the power situation and um, we're kind of internally debating what, what that can be. But um, The player package, you've probably heard us talk about that. I think there's many ways to improve the player package and we've been doing that by adding weapons. Uh, utility belt is an example of that. It's kind of an adjunct to it but something that benefits everyone and you know, since, since I started using utility belts I can't think of playing without them. Uh, I think mainframe will be the same. And then we've already announced soup tubes. I think soup tubes are going to be a huge addition to the player package, and that's going to make it really, really cool. But I think role players will enjoy that as well. It's just very convenient, or will be, since it's right now it's a figment of our collective imagination. Yes. Okay. Uh, looks like we're out of time. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are already on the world, so we're all good. Yeah. You can tell us all night long. Yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for coming up. Thanks, guys, for working. Thank you.